explore the relationship between man-made objects and those occurring in nature through the works of metalsmith Margaret Jacobs. Hear from Hypersaturation Magazine founders Joshua Gruff and Courtney E.G. And catch a performance from Reese Fulmer and the Carriage House Band. It's all ahead on this episode of AHA! Funding for AHA has been provided by your contribution and by contributions to the WMHT Venture Fund. Contributors include the Leo Cox Beach Philanthropic Foundation, Chet and Karen Alpelka, Robert and Doris Fisher Melsardi, and the Robeson Family Foundation. At m and Bank, we understand that the vitality of our communities is crucial to our continued success. That's why we take an active role in our community. m and Bank is pleased to support WMHT programming that highlights the arts, and we invite you to do the same. I'm Jade Warwick, and this is AHA, a house for arts, a place for all things creative. Here's Matt with today's field segment. I'm on my way to Salem, New York to visit with artist Margaret Jacobs. Let's go. Sasni Mohawk and I am a metalsmith who makes powder coated jewelry and fabricated steel sculpture. I started off with painting and mixed media and I just never quite got what I wanted to get out of it. And then I was introduced to welding and it just felt like a natural fit. That was the media I was meant to be using. I really was able to do everything that I wanted to do. And then there's this whole other historical layer to the material, um, just with Mohawk iron workers uh, building skyscrapers. So I really like the fact that my community also has a relationship to, to this material, as well as myself uh, as an artist. So I like that layering, and I tend to layer that in the work as well. I was introduced to jewelry with a friend and she showed me how to powder coat and it just felt like it would give me the opportunity to explore a couple different paths in my work. So the sculpture is great at doing larger things, it can move quickly. With the jewelry, I feel like I can explore a little bit um, similar concepts but in a little different way. So I can work on a smaller scale, it's a little bit easier physically. I can play with color in a way that I don't with the steel. And then it really just engages the viewer in a different way. The viewer, the person wearing it, can really have this more intimate relationship with the jewelry. They're wearing it, they're interacting with it, it's on their body. What I do is I create different patterns from imagery, primarily botanicals. I'll draw and I'll create all of these patterns and then hand cut those out of brass. And then I'm going to take those over to my torch and I will solder those together so that I have a finished object. You get this flat image of a botanical that has a little bit of form to it. Over top of that, I will powder coat on different colors, different layers, different textures, um, so that you wind up with this surface that's either really colorful or really matte. It can have texture that looks like leather, or it can be really gemmy and carry a lot of different color layering in it as well. I've always been really interested in material, um, material use, and just like material shift. You know, can you make one thing look like another thing? I have a couple pieces that I'm using this texture that looks like leather. So I can create this thing out of metal and then I can coat it and then it pretty much looks like black leather. When you look at it, you're like, well, that's not really supposed to be like that. That shouldn't look soft. That shouldn't look organic. Um, it's going to pull the viewer in more and they're going to spend more time with the object. They're going to spend 
uh, more time looking at it, they're going to create more of a relationship with it. When I'm creating my work, I like there to be layers of narratives, layers of storytelling. So if I'm looking at a specific plant or botanical, it's because that there's layer of narrative in that. There might be historical story, there might be familial, might be personal story, um, but there is all this layering. So uh, right now in my jewelry, I'm doing a lot of berries and using a lot of strawberries and as well as blueberries and blackberries. Um, strawberries are really important culturally. I have a lot of stories in memory that remind me of my grandmother and spending summers um, on her land in Akwazasne. So having those uh, layers of storytelling within the work, even if the viewer doesn't necessarily know what's happening is really important to me. Right now what I'm working on is kind of taking these flat jewelry forms that I've been making and creating them more into objects and in the round. And I just finished um, a couple pieces that are really exploring that. And I think that's really what I'm gravitating to right now and where I kind of want to see my path continuing. Hypersaturation Magazine builds itself as a magazine celebrating everything slightly off-color. Founded by Joshua Gruff and Courtney E.G., the periodical strives to highlight artists of every medium, uncovering hidden gems all around us. So how did the idea for a print magazine start, and what can we look forward to in the next issue? I sat down with Joshua and Courtney to find out. Hi guys, welcome to AHA, welcome Josh, welcome Courtney. Hi. Hey. It's nice to have you here today and I'm super excited yeah. to talk about all the artistic endeavors behind this magazine we're about to get into. So before we dive in, I just wanna get a little bit of artistic background on you both. So let's we'll start with you, Courtney. Uh, so my artistic background started when I was a little kid. Um, my mom was reading books to me about like Salvador Dali and George O'Keefe and like, Love. yes, mm -hmm. and just really influenced my style as a small child and Pablo Picasso too. And then from there, I um, became kind of, I just wanted to be a filmmaker. I, for some reason, I made a claymation video um, of just a ball of clay moving back and forth on like a VHS camera to uh, Loser by Beck. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> that was my first uh, avant-garde endeavor. And then um, I was like 13 looking at film schools I wanted to go to. Ended up going to St. Rose um, for communications and film and new media. Decided my senior year that I wanted to be a graphic designer and then taught myself how to design. And from there I was able to start um, Null Void Apparel, which is my clothing company. So yeah. Null Void just kind of started as in 2017, just kind of my brain on t-shirts is how I like to describe it. So I love that. Yes, putting our wearable art, putting our yes. brain on clothing. Yes, that's exactly what, yeah, I always call it, it's where I call it like artwear instead of streetwear a lot, just because it is just, sometimes it is just my brain on a shirt. So. Oh, beautiful. What about you, Josh? Yeah, music has been my whole life. Uh, starting from fourth grade, I was playing drums. I played on the stage at Warp Tour uh, in 10th grade. And then from there in college, I got into recording, engineering, and um, songwriting. And so after college, I just recorded songs and uh, wrote songs and just threw parties, learned how to DJ. Mm -hmm. And uh, throughout that time, I became a big fan of just the arts in general. Mm -hmm. So this magazine came from just years of being in the art scene and just loving being around artists. Ah, that's amazing. So like these two uh, skill sets like combined into one, oh, yeah. which will lead us to hypersaturation. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. So what, how does hypersaturation begin and how would you describe it to folks who may not know about it? One of my hobbies is collecting books and magazines, manga, I love reading graphic novels, I love looking at fashion magazines. And so I just wanted to provide a, a fashionable home for our local artists and yes. uh, have a place to be able to showcase their art full color and uh, in a physical form. I felt like through the pandemic, art became really digital. You know, there was a need uh, for digital parties, mm. DJs DJing on their phone, and <laughs> but 
we're past the pandemic now, and uh, I want people to put their phone down, pick up a copy of Hypersaturation, and go to the park and read. Yeah, really just be physically involved within the arts. And I agree, I'm a huge art book collector, and I prefer reading art books and reading an article or reading a digital copy on there. So that's really right. important for folks. And so it just began just from an idea? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I wanted to uh, work in the magazine field, in the publication field. I wanted to be a writer for Rolling Stone or an editor for Vogue, but they don't really hand those jobs out <laughs> too often or, or for people that has never been in the publication field. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest lessons you learn about being an artist for you know 25 years as I have been is that if you want something, you just need to do it yourself. That is true, you just gotta do it. You gotta lead your own, I don't know, lead your own dreams. I always right. say, as an artist myself, I'm like, if I don't see the change happening or what I want to see around me, I'm just going to do it myself. Right. And usually that works. Right, exactly. <laughs> so what about the content and the theme? So how do you pick the themes for hypersaturation? Our first three were kind of, we call them our mixtape issues. Um, they were open submission, open call, just for we wanted to celebrate all things off color. And um, we got a lot of a lot of submissions, like enough to fill Hundreds. three, like <laughs> enough to fill three magazines. And then we came up with a just kind of like themes, ideas that were just kind of basic words. There's like food, tattoos, and fashion. Thank you, God. Food, <laughs> tattoos, and fashion. <laughs> then from there, we took the words and fleshed it out, like just the one words, and I think fleshed it out into what they became. Which, if you wanted to expand on that. Yeah, we also, uh, so we pretty much meet once a week, and uh, during our meetings, we plan out, um, we have to plan out at least, um, you know, two months in advance. Uh, it takes three weeks to get the magazines from the printer, and it takes, I don't know, five, six weeks to get everything all together. So that's two wow. months right there. During those two months where, um, talking to artists, we're gathering art. If um, I'm at the magazine stand and see a cool magazine, I'll, I'll get it to Inspo. <laughs> for inspiration. Okay. And yeah, if something works well, we'll try to incorporate it in our magazine. Oh, it's beautiful. So speaking of that, what do you think sets you guys apart from all the other art magazines? Definitely the number one uh, thing that sets, up, sets us apart is that this magazine is created by Joshua and Courtney. Yeah. It is our unique perspective. It is our uh, unique take on curating things. Um, we do look at a lot of references, but a lot of the time is we're finding that our natural instincts are, are what are, is what pushes us mm -hmm. to the next level. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Courtney? Do you have any thoughts on to add to that? Um, but like to add like the tangibility like aspect of it, I think that's important. There's a lot of webzines out there, and a lot of mm -hmm. I think what also sets us apart is the I feel like it's very in depth, and it's, it takes a lot of from both of us emotionally and mentally, and like in a good way. What is your uh, feedback from the community? How do the artists feel? I know it's almost all positive, which is great. But like, what are your thoughts? What are some comments that you've gotten back? The whole, the community as a whole just really has opened up and accepted and it's, it, and we've made so many amazing connections through, like, that we wouldn't have made before. So. Oh, that's true. Like, I didn't even think about the socializing aspect of it. Like, oh, yeah. now you're being able to create and really meet new people in this creative field that you've never really even thought to probably even think about before or even no, meet. <laughs> yeah, especially as someone who is incredibly introverted, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I get that introvert life. <laughs> yeah. Our most recent issue, we did a tattoo issue where we interviewed 10 tattoo artists. And uh, while I was interviewing uh, the tattoo artists, one of the things that they loved about being in this issue was that they were gonna be able to connect with other local tattoo artists. Oh. So not only are we connecting tattoo artists with people that are curious about tattoos, and, but we're also connecting the tattoo community. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what we found out with the tattoo community, it's a very, um, you gotta, everyone teaches each other. Mm -hmm. Everyone, uh, in order to tattoo better, you have to go and watch people tattoo and get inspired by their art, ask questions, mm -hmm. um, and 
that learning and that education is is just an added bonus. So it really this, bridges uh, the divide between the communities. Definitely. Not that there is a divide, but it kind of just bridges us all together so we all know each other. Right. The divide is not knowing each other. And now we are because yeah. we're all in this one publication together. Yeah. I mean, there is a divide as far as uh, the online community. The algorithm will ah, tell you true. what to what to see, and mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to miss some of the amazing things going on right underneath your nose. But with this magazine, uh, we're hoping to really showcase a lot of artists that might get buried or left behind. Ah, that's beautiful. Yeah. And one more thing before we go, uh, how do folks submit to Hypersaturation? How do they submit an entry to be in there? Yeah, we're on Instagram, at Hypersaturation. Send us a DM. Also, come to one of our parties. Uh, and then HypersaturationMagazine at gmail.com. Ah. So yeah, send us an email. Send us uh, some art. Tell your friends. Come and find us. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Josh, and thank you, Courtney. Yeah. Thank I appreciate you so much. You. Thank yeah, you for, thanks for having us. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Woo. Please welcome Reese Fulmer and the Carriage House Band. Cross 
crossing state lines to say goodbye to Caroline. I'll never be the same again. I'm crossing state lines to say goodbye to Caroline. I'll never be the same again. I'm crossing state lines to say goodbye to Caroline. Never be the same again. This is a tune that will be released in January 2023. It's off of the record that I'm working on right now called All the Time in the World um, under Reese Fulmer and the Carriage House Band. This is a song called San Francisco.
Thanks for joining us. For more arts, visit wmht.org slash aha, and be sure to connect with us on social. I'm Jade Warwick, and thanks for watching. Funding for AHA has been provided by your contribution and by contributions to the WMHT Venture Fund. Contributors include the Leo Cox Beach Philanthropic Foundation, Chet and Karen Alpelka, Robert and Doris Fisher Melsardi, and the Robeson Family Foundation. At m and Bank, we understand that the vitality of our communities is crucial to our continued success. That's why we take an active role in our community. MIT Bank is pleased to support WMHT programming that highlights the arts and we invite you to do the same.